In our last video, we covered games that are due to come out this year and have a confirmed release date. However, that's not always the case. Oftentimes, you'll see listings for games on Amazon or in retailers with a release date of September 30th or December 31st. These dates are placeholders and typically mean the game has a release window such as Q3 or Q4. Other times, we're given vague windows such as Fall or Holiday 2020 as a placeholder before an official date announcement. And sometimes we're just told a game will come out in 2020 with no idea when. With the release of the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 on the horizon, many of the titles on this list will likely receive official release dates soon after the big console reveal events. Welcome back to Game Gentlemen. In this list we look at 20 games set for release in 2020 with no confirmed release date. Oddworld Soulstorm Announced back in 2016 for a 2017 release, Oddworld Soulstorm had initially been pushed back to 2019 before being pushed back again to 2020. Marked as a retake of the 1998 Oddworld Abe's Exodus, the sequel to the original Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, Soulstorm is stated to be bigger and more ambitious than the original, featuring classic elements as well as some original levels and concepts. The game will feature the Karma system introduced in Munch's Odyssey, as well as branching story paths. Oddworld Soulstorm will be coming to consoles and PC as an Epic Game Store exclusive sometime later this year. Tales of Arise Tales of Arise is the latest entry into the action RPG Tales series. Arise sees artist Minoru Iwamoto return as character designer and art director. Arise follows the adventures of Alphen and Shion, travellers from different backgrounds as they navigate the conflict between their worlds. Gameplay is said to have gone through a number of revisions from previous Tales titles, although the details are scarce. We do know that Tales of Arise is being built in Unreal 4 engine, rather than the developer's in-house engine as per previous titles. Tales of Arise is being developed and published by Bandai Namco and is set to release on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. Monstrum 2 Monstrum 2 is a procedurally generated horror game where players must escape a decaying labyrinth in order to survive. Players are pit against each other in an asymmetric 4v1 multiplayer, as some play as the humans trying to escape, while one player will play as the horrifying creatures chasing them. As a procedurally generated title, no two matches will be the same, and players will have to adapt to their surroundings and think on the fly. Players trying to escape will need to work together to achieve their objectives and likely not get lost. Monstrum 2 is planned for a late Q4 release on the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, reportedly with backwards compatibility for current consoles. Monstrum is being developed and published by Team Junkfish. Empire of Sin Turn-based strategy game Empire of Sin puts players in the middle of Prohibition-era Chicago, with players expanding their empire by building speakeasies, brothels and casinos while forming alliances or going into direct conflict with rival syndicates. Empire of Sin is being developed by husband and wife team John and Brenda Romero, and yes, we do mean that John Romero of Doom and Wolfenstein fame. However, his wife Brenda's game development experience should not be overlooked either, with vast experience in role-playing games such as the Wizardry series, Jagged Alliance, Dungeons and Dragons for consoles, and Realms of Arcania. As a matter of fact, it's reported that the Prohibition era setting was her idea as it's something she has wanted to do for decades. Gameplay is very similar to the XCOM series of games with base management in the form of building out your empire, a squad of allies, each with their own unique personality traits and skills which will develop and change over time, and turn-based tactical combat. Empire of Sin is being published by Paradox Interactive and has been given a release window of Spring 2020. Psychonauts 2 Double Fine Studios is returning to the very first game that they made as a studio with Psychonauts 2. Psychonauts was a critical success at the time, but a commercial flop, only building its cult status in the years after its launch. Game director Tim Shaver has long expressed his desire to return to the franchise, and after some false starts and a campaign through crowdfunding platform Fig, the game is almost ready for launch. Returning to the world of the original, players will once again take control of Raz, a newly graduated psychonaut with powerful abilities as he dives into the mental worlds of several NPCs. The game will feature traditional platforming along with psychic abilities such as telekinesis and levitation. 
Schaefer has stated that some of the ideas in the original, such as Raz's family, their history, and the curse that affects them would be explored in the sequel, as he had always envisioned the original game as part of a larger story. Psychonauts was meant to be released in 2019, but was delayed with no fixed release date. When the game does come out, it will be released on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And it's likely to be the last Double Fine game to come out on PlayStation platforms, as the studio has been acquired by Xbox Game Studios. Gods and Monsters Created by Ubisoft Quebec, the studio behind Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Gods and Monsters is an open-world storybook adventure set in ancient Greece. And while the studio and setting are the same, the two games could not be more different in look and feel. Players take control of the forgotten hero, who must save the gods from the deadliest creature in Greek mythology, Typhon. Armed with special abilities bestowed upon them by the gods, players will perform heroic feats and face mythological beasts, trials and dungeons. Not much more is known about the core gameplay of Gods and Monsters, but its colourful animated art style gives off slight Breath of the Wild vibes, and we can expect many of the hallmarks of Ubisoft open world games to be present. Gods and Monsters was originally due to launch February 25th, 2020, but was one of several delays at the start of the year. Ubisoft has not given a revised release date, but we know from their earnings call that they expect to release 5 games this fiscal year. Rainbow Six Quarantine Another Ubisoft title which was due to release earlier this year, Rainbow Six Quarantine is currently slated to release in the fiscal year, which runs until May 31st, 2021. Rainbow Six Quarantine is set several years in the future, and sets players in a cooperative three-person team. Quarantine is taking its inspiration from the month-long outbreak event which happened in Year 3 of Rainbow Six Siege, and pitted players in a PvE horde mode, taking on waves of zombie-like creatures. Quarantine will use many mechanics and operators from Rainbow Six Siege, so the game is likely to feel familiar to players of that title. However, don't be surprised if Ubisoft has some new mechanics and systems waiting to surprise you. The Dark Pictures Anthology, Little Hope Little Hope is the next title in the Supermassive Games Dark Pictures Anthology series, following on from the first title, Man of Medan. Set in the titular Little Hope, an isolated town with a Salem-like history of witch trials, four college students and their teacher are trapped after their bus crashes and they're encircled by a mysterious fog. Players must explore the town to find a way to escape while being haunted by the visions of the town's dark past. Little Hope was announced in April this year and is set for a mid-2020 release. Dying Light 2 Dying Light 2 is the follow-up to the 2015 surprise hit, Dying Light. Developer Techland took a lot of lessons from their development of previous titles Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide, and incorporated a free-flowing parkour system as a way to traverse the landscape. Dying Light 2 picks up 15 years after the events of the first game, and players will take control of a new protagonist, similarly equipped with various parkour skills. As players progress, they will encounter both human and zombie enemies, fight with improvised melee weapons, and use various tools to aid in their traversal around the world. The game will also reportedly introduce different factions forcing players to make choices throughout the story, which will impact their relationship with one faction or another. Unlike the first Dying Light, which was published by WB Games, Techland are self-publishing the sequel. However, in January this year, Techland announced the game was being delayed indefinitely in order to deliver an experience that lives up to their standards and fan expectations. There have been rumours circulating that Microsoft was set to buy out the studio, however, up to the point of this recording, they have remained just that. With no fixed launch date and radio silence from Techland, we hope that we'll get to see Dying Light this side of 2020. Spelunky 2 Spelunky 2 is the sequel to the 2008 roguelike Spelunky, created by David Yu. Like its predecessor, players will navigate procedurally generated caves, collecting treasure, fighting enemies, and dodging deadly traps. Players will be able to play with friends online, and can choose from four different playable characters, including Anna Spelunky, the child of the original game's protagonist. The game retains the original's trademark playstyle and humour, with what appears to be the addition of rideable mounts as seen in the gameplay trailer. Spelunky is coming to PlayStation 4 and PC at this stage, with other platforms being considered, but not yet announced. Watch Dogs Legion The third of our delayed Ubisoft titles on this list, but not the last Ubisoft game we'll cover, 
Watch Dogs Legion is the third instalment into the Watch Dogs franchise and takes us to a dystopian, near-future London. Once again, we meet up with hacker group DeadSec as they fight to bring down CTOS, whose technology and surveillance systems have allowed an authoritarian regime to take control of the United Kingdom. We'll see familiar open-world, third-person gameplay mechanics such as cover shooting, traversal, hacking phones, computer systems and surveillance cameras, and the use of drone and remote control technology. However, unlike the first two titles in the franchise where we followed a singular protagonist, Legion will require players to recruit NPCs whose skills match the requirements of a mission, with Ubisoft promising that every NPC will be playable. Players must also exercise caution as this game features permadeath and if you lose an operative in the mission, you lose them forever. The game seems to take a much darker tone than the sunny, Silicon Valley centred world of Watch Dogs 2. We only hope that they don't fall into the same trap of the first game and put us in control of characters who take themselves way too seriously. As with other Ubisoft titles on this list, we have no date other than 2020 after the game's initial delay earlier in the year. Watch Dogs 2 released in November of 2016 and Ubisoft looks like they have a busy holiday period if they're set to release at least three of their five planned titles this year. Outriders Outriders is a third-person cover shooter from Polish studio People Can Fly and is being published by Square Enix. People Can Fly have a pedigree in this kind of title with development experience on Gears of War, Painkiller and the Bulletstorm titles. Players will create their character and choose from one of four classes, each with its own perks and playstyle. The game is set to have role-playing elements with players able to talk to NPCs, explore hub worlds, complete side missions, and select options from a dialogue tree. The game can either be played solo or in a three-player cooperative mode. Initial reactions were that this game looks like it will be a live service title similar to Destiny or The Division. However, People Can Fly have assured critics that while the game was designed with co-op in mind, it was not a live service and would have a start and end point. Outriders is still flagged for a holiday 2020 release date and is confirmed for current and next-gen platforms. Scorn What would you get if you combined a first-person shooter like Bioshock with the works of H.R. Geiger? You would probably end up with something like Scorn, the first-person shooter horror game set in a techno-organic world where steel, flesh and bone combine. Scorn is being developed and published by Serbian studio Ebb Software and is being released as a third-party exclusive for the Xbox Series X. Ebb Software are not developing an Xbox One version of the game, stating that they did not want to spend resources developing a sub-par experience. If we consider that Xbox themselves have stated that there will be no pure Xbox Series X exclusives for some time after the console's launch, maybe this one's not making it to 2020. Halo Infinite We know the Xbox Series X is coming, and we know that Halo Infinite is coming with it. The sixth title in the mainline Halo story, Infinite will continue the story of Master Chief in the third chapter of the Reclaimer Saga. Developed by 343 Industries, Halo Infinite sets Master Chief on his greatest adventure yet to save humanity. The game will release on Xbox One, Series X and Windows PC. According to franchise development director Frank O'Connor, the game is being developed for the Xbox One, being built so that it plays and looks fantastic on that platform, with enhancements available to players on the Series X. No doubt we'll have a more fixed date for Halo when we have a fixed date for the Series X, but expect this one in time for Christmas this year. Tell Me Why Tell Me Why is the latest episodic adventure game by Don't Nod Entertainment, the developers of Life is Strange, and published by Xbox Game Studios. It's expected to run across three episodes, and launch on PCs and Xbox One mid-2020. The game tells us the story of twins Allison and Tyler, who must travel to their childhood home in Alaska to confront and come to terms with events from their childhood. The game deals with childhood trauma and gender identity issues, and Don't Nod have worked with GLAAD to ensure that the subject matter is handled with care and authenticity. Don't Nod are known for their storytelling with titles like Remember Me, Life is Strange, and The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit. And while the subject matter may not appeal to all gamers, they are certainly the kind of studio that could handle a story like this with care. Godfall 
Godfall is actually the first real PlayStation 5 title that we've seen. Set in a fantasy world split between the realms of Earth, Water, Air, Fire, and Spirit, players take the role of one of three class types with their own loadouts and playstyles. Gameplay is being described as a looter slasher, riffing on the usual looter shooter moniker. The game supports both single player and up to three player drop in, drop out co op. As per Halo Infinite, as this is a next gen release, we can expect to hear more about a release date when we have a release date for the console. Assassin's Creed Valhalla In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we set sail in Viking longships for the coast of England during the Middle Ages. Players will take control of a male or female version of the game protagonist Eivor as they establish, build and expand their settlement, raid for supplies and come into conflict with the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. The game follows the more action RPG centric style of the more recent entries Origins and Odyssey and while many familiar mechanics will remain, new mechanics will be introduced such as the ability to dual wield weapons in combat. The game also sees the return of the Hidden Blade, a staple in Assassin's Creed folklore. The game is confirmed to be a cross-generation title, and all marketing materials so far carry the Xbox and Series X logos. A gameplay trailer was featured as part of May's Xbox Live event, however, this trailer was heavily criticised for its liberal use of the term gameplay, featuring nothing more than quick cuts interspersed with what will no doubt be in-engine cutscenes. Assassin's Creed Valhalla has been set for a full 2020 release, and if history is anything to go by, we can expect that window to fall late September to early October. Elden Ring Elden Ring is the next title from developer From Software, and is a collaboration with fantasy writer George R. R. Martin. The game is being published by Bandai Namco Entertainment for PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. Not much is known about the project, except that game director Hidetaka Miyazaki has stated that it is going to be much more of a natural evolution of the Souls games, featuring larger, open worlds, and new mechanics such as horseback riding and combat. Although, we can probably expect the usual Souls staples of punishing and precise combat, larger-than-life bosses, and lots and lots of death. Miyazaki has been a fan of George R. R. Martin for a long time and invited him to collaborate on the game given Martin free reign to write the overarching story of the game's universe. Miyazaki has then used that as the foundation of the game's narrative, comparing the process to working with a Dungeon Master's handbook. Elden Ring currently does not have a release window other than 2020. Vampire the Masquerade – Bloodlines 2 Based on the tabletop game Vampire the Masquerade, and set as a sequel to the 2004 game of the same name, Bloodlines 2 puts players in the shoes of a newly turned thin blood vampire. Players must customise their character's background from barista to career criminal and choose one of three thin blood disciplines, which will affect dialogue options and gameplay mechanics respectively. As the player progresses, they must choose to align with one of five full blood vampire clans, each with their own unique skill sets. Gameplay is mostly first person with the camera switching to third person for specific activities, much like the later Deus Ex games. Players must balance their humanity to avoid becoming a mindless beast and are penalised for using certain abilities in front of witnesses, eventually alerting police to their presence, driving humans to avoid the streets and becoming the target of other vampires. I don't know about anyone else, but that just says to me, leave no witnesses. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is being developed by Hardsuit Labs and published by Paradox Interactive. While the game was part of the Xbox Series X May Showcase, it is a multi-platform title and will be coming to current and next-gen consoles sometime later in the year. Bright Memory Infinite Bright Memory Infinite is being developed by independent developer FYQD in the Unreal Engine. The new title is actually a full game extension of the episodic game series Bright Memory, which launched on Steam Early Access in January last year. Bright Memory Infinite is set to be a cross-platform title and will be releasing on Xbox Series X, PC and PlayStation 5. Set in the year 2036, a strange phenomenon for which scientists cannot find an explanation is occurring around the world. The science research organisation has tasked the protagonist Sheila to investigate. It is soon discovered that these strange occurrences are connected to an archaic mystery, an as of yet unknown history of two worlds about to come to light. 
Bright Memory Infinite combines first-person shooting, melee, and supernatural abilities, which will allow players to unleash combo attacks and receive awards in a system similar to Devil May Cry. Players will earn experience points to unlock additional skills such as the stopping of time mechanic we see in the trailer. FIQD expects the game to run at 4K, 60 frames on next generation consoles and has stopped development work on the episodic format in favour of focusing on the full game experience. As stated on the game's Steam page, From here on out, I will no longer be developing Bright Memory Episode 1 any further, but I plan on making regular, experimental editions of various new features which players will be able to try out. Once development of Bright Memory Infinite is complete, it will be distributed as a separate game, but those who have already purchased Bright Memory Episode 1 will receive a special 100% off discount coupon for Bright Memory Infinite prior to its release. And that's the end of the list. Which titles are you most excited for? Will you be pre-ordering anything on the list? Tell us your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, be sure to like this video, and if you've just discovered us, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with our content. This has been Game Gentleman, and thanks for watching.